Hey, what's up? This is Harry Wagner from Harry's Situations. And I'm Mike Henderson from the All Terrain Family Channel. I'm usually behind the camera for these videos, but I've been here the whole time. Yeah, today we're gonna talk about weight. Now you've heard me talk about this before as it pertains to things like rock crawlers. I did a whole video about my tracker and lightweight tips, but we're gonna talk about weight related to overlanding. And that's why Mike is with us because we have his Toyota Tacoma behind us. Yeah, so you're familiar with Harry's full-size one-ton Ram with a giant slide-in camper in the back, and it weighs 11,000 pounds. True story. And this is my Toyota Tacoma here, and it weighs literally half that. But only one of these vehicles is over GVW. Can you guess which one it is? Yeah, so today we're gonna to talk about uh, overlanding and why you might want one kind of vehicle versus the other when you're doing that kind of activity. This video has been brought to you by Nitto Tire USA. I not only run Nittos on my Jeep, but also on my Ram tow rig, on my big Ford on 40s. Nitto makes tires in a variety of sizes and different applications for everything from drift cars to side-by-sides. Check out all their offerings at nittotire.com. Now, I mentioned GVWR, Gross Vehicle Weight Rating. And what that is, every vehicle has it. It's the upper limit for not just the vehicle, but any fuel, any passengers, and gear you have with you. You are not supposed to exceed that. You can add things like airbags or more horsepower, and those are definitely worthwhile upgrades, but they're not actually gonna change the GVW of your vehicle. True fact. One of the things I admire most about Mike is that he's out there doing it. He's the real deal. For years, he and his wife and two boys were out exploring in a third gen 4Runner that didn't have a rooftop tent and a freezer fridge, but they didn't let that stop them from exploring all over Nevada and beyond. So this is our new adventure vehicle. It's a 2017 Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road in the short bed and double cab configuration. If you wanna learn more about this, you can check out the All Terrain Family channel here on YouTube. Uh, but the elevator pitch is that we wanted to create a vehicle that had the most capability for overlanding and off-roading with the family and exploring, going to ghost towns and all the cool places, um, but keep it as light as possible. And also kind of keep it as minimalist looking on the outside as possible as well. So those of you who know Tacomas are already laughing, but hear me out. When we shot our very first video for Driving Line, it was the very first day I had this truck and it was bone stock. And we took it way out into the Nevada backcountry to recover our friend Pete. Along the way, I smashed the factory skid plates, so of course, first upgrade was new skid plates. To keep things as light as possible, I got the full skid plate kit from RCI, but in aluminum, which is more than 100 pounds lighter than the steel. The trade-off here is that aluminum will gouge or bend more easily than steel, but this truck is not intended to be a rock crawler. Second need was to increase clearance and suspension performance on all the rough roads we drive. I went with the Old Man Emu BP51 suspension setup for heavy constant load and had the suspension installed at Silver State Off-Road in Reno. I'm a big fan of pretty much everything ARB makes, including their Old Man Emu line of suspension. So Mike's running BP51 shocks on his truck. BP stands for bypass. 51 is the piston diameter of the shock in millimeters, so a little over two inches. But by being a bypass shock, it's not only velocity sensitive, but it's also position sensitive. So you can set up the suspension to be really supple around town and over small bumps, but then it's still going to stiffen up if you have a big event and not just crash into the bump stop. These are coupled with Old Man Emu's leaf springs in the back. And one of the things they do is they actually have different products available for the same truck, but with different load ratings. So if you run really heavy, they have a suspension for that. If your truck is mainly stock and pretty light, they also have a different suspension option for that. While ARB does make an upper control arm for these Tacomas, they were not available for this build. So I ordered SPC upper control arms from Ben Swain at Slee Off-Road. You'll remember Ben from the Rubicon video we did last year and the spotting video we did last year. Upper control arms let you get the best possible alignment for an independent front suspension while maximizing the suspension travel. They use a sealed tie rod end rather than a uniball and require less maintenance as a result. 
My Ram fits a 37 inch Nitto Ridge Grappler with only a two inch lift in the front and actually the factory height in the rear. These trucks have really big wheel well openings, kind of like a Jeep Wrangler has, allows for a big tire. So I'm running some Synergy components in the front. I've got their radius arm drop brackets and their coils. And then the rear, I have stock leaf springs. This is a one ton truck, so it has leaf springs unlike the Ram 2500 with coils in the rear. I actually prefer the leaves. I have added airbags in the back, uh, not just for the weight, but for towing as well. They really come in handy. Those are Firestone airbags. They're in a Daystar cradle. The cradle allows the airbag to drop away when the suspension articulates rather than tearing the bag. At all four corners, I've got two and a half inch diameter Fox remote reservoir shocks. Those help smooth out the ride. All these parts were installed by Nate's Precision and I couldn't be happier. So the suspension package that we put on this truck uh, was really to make room for bigger tires because it's all about bigger tires. Um, but with bigger tires come heavier weights. And uh, so one thing that I did to combat that was I used a narrower tire. People like to call it the pizza cutter. Um, it's a 255. 80, 17. So it's about half an inch narrower than the stock tire that comes on this truck, but it's three inches taller. One thing that gets you is better packaging. So we can fit it in the wheel wells without having to do the cab mount chop or a bunch of cutting of the inner fender liners, which are really common when you go with a 285, uh, which people really like to run on this truck. Tacomas come from the factory with a P metric tire, not an LT or light truck tire like Mike's added here with the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. Now I get why Toyota does this. These tires are lighter, they have less rolling resistance, and they provide better fuel economy as a result. Fortunately, they're pretty easy to swap out, and I recommend you do so if you're going off road. You definitely want an LT tire and not a P metric tire when you hit the trail. Even though both of these trucks are running Nitto Ridge Grapplers, they're different sizes, and those sizes are different weights. So I have 37s, they weigh 85 pounds a piece. Mike's whole tire and wheel combo only weighs about 85 pounds. And my AEV Salta HD wheels add another 35 pounds of rotating weight that you have to get moving and get stopped all the time. So as Mike mentioned, these Nitto Ridge Grapplers are a 255-80R17 tire. So 255 is the section width in millimeters, 80 is the percent of that that's the sidewall. So the larger that number is, the taller your sidewall is gonna be. And then 17 is the wheel diameter. The wheel he's using are Method 703 Trail Series wheels. Now, I'm a big fan of these wheels. They use something Method calls bead grip technology. So it actually has a serrated inner bead that keeps the tire on the wheel better at low air pressure. That's particularly important if you're running a narrow tire relative to the rim because it doesn't push out against those outer beads as much as a wider tire would do. The other nice thing about these methods, they're only four pounds heavier than the stock wheels were and they're a 17 versus a 16 inch wheel. If you're building a vehicle for overland use, you're probably going to want an aftermarket bumper. And the reason is the factory bumper doesn't have provisions for things like winches or light mounts or recovery points. So Mike and I both wanted aftermarket bumpers, but honestly, there's a lot of options out there that just aesthetically aren't that appealing. They look like the truck has a fat lip and we both wanted to avoid that. Just like ARB, I like pretty much everything American Expedition Vehicles makes as well. And I added their front and rear bumpers to my Ram truck. Now these bumpers are modular, they come in multiple pieces, which make it easier to replace a section if it gets damaged or dented. The front, Nate's Precision installed with a Warren 16.5 TI winch and Baja Designs LP6 lights. And I couldn't be happier with the look and the functionality. So we do end up going out into the middle of Nevada alone uh, with just the family in this one truck quite frequently. So it was really important to us that we have things like a winch and rated recovery points. But a lot of the winches that you can get for these trucks are really heavy. So this setup with the winch and the bumper really only adds about 120, 130 pounds to the whole setup. The worn semi-hidden winch bumper for Tacoma weighs about 60 pounds, but provides a winch mounting location, two solid recovery points that are easy to reach, and sturdy protection for the front of the truck. The winch is a worn VR Evo 10S. This standard duty winch is rated for 10,000 pounds at 5.2 feet per minute with 90 feet of synthetic rope. It's a bit overkill for a Tacoma, but I should be able to get by without having to use a snatch block, and the whole thing only weighs about 70 pounds. Fun fact, the Evo 10S and 12S weigh the same amount. The difference in pulling power comes from the gearing in the winch. 
you trade line speed for pulling power. So I might eventually want to go with a rear bumper, but obviously the concerns are that we keep it light. So if I can find an option that looks good and retains the factory blind spot monitoring sensors and also doesn't add a whole lot of weight, then I might go for it. On some vehicles, you can get away with running larger tires without re-gearing. This is pretty common on diesel trucks. I ran 35 inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers for years on my Ram before I put the camper in it and 37s on it with the factory 342 gears. There weren't really too many compromises. So that is decidedly not the case with the Toyota Tacoma. This truck came stock with 390 gearing, which was honestly too tall, even with the stock tires. When I put on these 33 inch Nittos, it went from bad to worse. Even though I'm trying to keep the Tacoma light, it's still way heavier than stock. And that has a big effect on power and performance when driving around. The easy solution was to re-gear the ring and pinion in the axles. And Lance at Silver State was all too happy to get his hands dirty for me. Now the gearing is lower than stock, making the truck all around much better to drive, even when fully loaded down. Now since adding more weight and the larger tires, I have had Axle Line re-gear the axles to 410, but you would never want to add all that weight to a Tacoma without re-gearing. It's important to stay within the constraints of your truck, which are different for a mid-sized truck and a one-ton truck. So what does a one-ton truck even mean? Uh, you probably know that these come with a Cummins turbo diesel, they make a ton of torque, but everything is sized up. So the frame is bigger and beefier, the axles are bigger, this actually has solid axles front and rear. The front uses a nine and a quarter inch ring gear. It's an AAM axle, American axle manufacturing, but it's comparable to like a Dana 60. The rear uses 11 and a half inch ring gear and it's a full floater. So what that means is the axle shafts just have to transfer power. There's a hub at the end that actually supports all of that weight. Now, by contrast, the Tacoma doesn't have any of those things. The Tacoma has independent front suspension with a clamshell style aluminum housing with an eight inch ring gear. The rear, I actually like. Third gen Tacomas come with an eight and three quarter inch ring gear with a selectable electronic locker if you get this TRD off-road package like Mike has. And it's a great combo, but eight and three quarter inches ain't as big as 11 and a half. Axles and brakes are important with regards to a vehicle's weight as well. Not just the size, but also the functionality. While the Tacoma has a semi-float rear axle where the axle shaft has to both carry the weight of the vehicle and transmit power, my Ram has full floating axles. The axle shaft transmits the power, but there's a hub at the outer end that supports all that weight. And it also has massive brakes. The disc brakes on the front and rear of the Ram are over 14 inches, where the Tacoma, by contrast, has 10.8 inch front rotors and actually uses drums in the rear so you couldn't carry nearly as much weight and be able to stop safely with the Tacoma as you can with the Ram. So different vehicles have different payloads and those provide different opportunities. My Ram being a one ton allowed me to put this slide in camper in it. It weighs about 1700 pounds. It's a North Star 650 SC. Now that's about 600 pounds more than a comparable four wheel camper due to things like the full wet bath with a toilet and the electric lift system. But these were still designed for a half ton truck. I put it in my one ton truck and it doesn't even mind. If you wanna know more about my camper or my Ram in general, we did a whole video about why this is better than a van for the Driving Line channel. Check it out. So for the back of the Tacoma here, I just wanted a simple system that I could use to store my camera gear during the week and all of our camping gear and food and stuff on the weekends. Um, now, most of the DIY plans you see for decks like this and almost all of the ready-built systems that you could purchase weigh over 200 pounds. By contrast, this system uses just one sheet of three quarter inch plywood on the top, nothing on the bottom. And then these drawers I made out of half inch plywood. And so the whole system weighs less than 120 pounds and it really maximizes the use of space in the back of the tr truck here. If you only take away one thing from this video, remember to work within the design parameters of your vehicle, whatever it happens to be. Those are different for a Tacoma than they are for a Ram. And it doesn't mean one's better than the other. It just means that you're going to have to make choices. So the Ram, we've got everything including the kitchen sink, but it's not nearly as light and nimble as Mike's Tacoma is. Have a vision in mind for your project when you start executing it and carry that out to fruition. If you do that, just like Mike, you won't be disappointed with the end results. That's it for this episode. 
But if you want to know more about my Ram, you can check out the video we made on the Driving Line channel. And if you want to know more about Mike's Tacoma, he's got a full build on his channel, All Terrain Family. Now, which one of these would you take for the weekend? Comment below and let us know. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.